Hello guys, this is Mike from programming.org. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about constructors. And in the last tutorial, remember I talked to you guys about get and set functions. And those were useful because now we could change these, uh, these variables that are under private. So we can't really directly access them, but we can use these functions to set and return the values that they hold. But wouldn't it be a lot easier if we didn't have to, say you know create a car object and do a set make and a uh, get or a set color a set model a set year all these different functions I would add up and that would be a lot of lines of ridiculous code so what we can do is what's called a constructor that as soon as you create the object this function runs automatically and what it does is it initializes or it what it can do is it initializes uh, all these variables right here if you want. It can do other things too, but that's what its main use is, is to initialize an object's uh, variables. So let me show you how to write that. This is a unique function as in that it does not ret have a return type. So see how this uh, function right here has a return type of string, this one void, and so on. This one, all we do is we give the name car. So the function name is car and since it doesn't have a return type it knows that this is the constructor and when you create the car this is the first thing it calls alright and I'm gonna do something that you probably shouldn't do it uh, this is an empty constructor so it doesn't have any parameters for the most part constructors usually have parameters but we don't have to have them and just so you can see that this is what is executed as soon as we create an object. I'm going to print something to the screen. I'm just going to say uh, new object created. And I'll end that line. And let's go down here. I'm going to get rid of a few things. Let's get rid of that. And I'm going to call it a song. And I'm going to call this my car. And end it with a semicolon. And we don't have to put these uh, empty parentheses right here. Let's just run it as is and say new object created. So we know that this is called automatically. We don't have to say my car dot whatever function that is. So now what we can do to make this more useful and more efficient for us is we can initialize all of these uh, private variables right here as soon as we create an object. That is, uh, takes a lot of extra coding out of the equation. So let's pass in some uh, parameters right here, or set some parameters. String, I'll just say string mk for make, and string md for model, string c for color, and y for year. And then I can just assign the mk to the make variable, and so on. So model will be assigned from what we passed in for MD and color will be assigned from that C and year equals, you guessed it, Y. If I can hit the semicolon, I'm coding in the dark right now. So now that is a good looking constructor right there. All right. And you can have multiple constructors such as if I wanted to just initialize the make in the model um, I could have another constructor that says car, string, make, and model, and then end it there and just initialize those variables and maybe even give default variables to the other ones. And you know you can mix and match that all you want. But this is a this will take care of all the variables right here, so that's why I'm writing it that way. Now let's go back down to car my car. Now we need to add those parentheses right here and pass in some values. So for make, I'm just going to say Ford, and make sure you're passing in a string, and make sure each argument that you're passing in is separated by a comma. And since these first three are strings, I need to put the double quotes around it. Come on, computer. All right, Ford, say Ford, uh, I'm a Taurus, and that's not spelled right, oh well. So what color is it? I'll just say red and 1990. 
old torus. There we go. So now I have this constructor. This is called automatically, so all of these variables right here that are private are set. So we don't have to do all these set functions. And now I can access these. I don't have a, a git for every single variable, but I do have it for git make and git color. And you can obviously just follow the pattern and do git year. Since git year is a little bit different, the only thing that's different is the return type. So it's int git year. And we can just say return year. There we go. All right, so that's the only thing that's different. String uh, or get model would be string get model, empty parentheses, open up some curly brackets, then return model. All right, so I'm not going to do all of that, but I'll show you that. Let's print it out first. C out my car dot get color and add a little bit of space and then we can say my car dot get make give it a little bit of space and my car dot get year right, these are completely out of order and looks pretty useless but you get the point of what is going on here. So let's run that now and see I have a red Ford 1990. So there you go. Now all of those variables are set in a really easy efficient way and that is basically what a constructor is. So a little uh, overview real quick is it's a function with no return type that gets called automatically when you create a new object of that type and it is great for initializing all these variables and you can do other things within it too but for now just set and initialize the variables thank you guys for watching and in the next tutorial um, I'm not sure what I'll get into maybe putting classes into this own file because that's usually what you'll do you won't always have them in the same file as the main function but in this case we do it's kind of a small class but we got to get used to doing the other way as well. So thank you guys for watching and please subscribe below.